Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Ignition Time. The massive, the ambitious 1.9 trillion dollar American rescue plan, the stimulus plan from the Biden administration designed to provide 1400 dollar stimulus checks, enhanced unemployment benefits, 400 dollars a week through the end of August, potentially through the end of September depending on what happens in the Senate. This entire plan misses the mark and fails the test. These aren't my words. These are the words of the US Chamber of Commerce Chief Policy Officer Neil Bradley. Now, I did do a video earlier on our channel talking about the initial comments from the US Chamber of Commerce, but in a brand new video, Neil Bradley spoke with CNBC and highlighted some of his misgivings about this $1.9 trillion stimulus plan. Now, keep in mind, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is an important organization. It represents many businesses, small businesses and large businesses, large businesses that are donors to both the Republicans and the Democrats, and small businesses that are dependent on the stimulus, small businesses for whom the Paycheck Protection Program is the difference between surviving and going out of business forever. Let's take a look at some of the comments from Neil Bradley. He starts by saying in this first segment that this package needs to be targeted, it needs to help those who need it, it shouldn't be providing money to everyone and he says it needs to be more targeted and timely and he says it needs to be revised to help those who truly need it because the program in its current form is not as targeted as it needs to be and is actually giving money to those who simply don't need it. These are very important comments and make sure you watch this video all the way through to the end because Neil Bradley makes some very important points about the need to continue unemployment benefits and about the importance of automatic stabilizers. In case you don't know what automatic stabilizers are, I'll cover them towards the second half of this video. But the automatic stabilizer component, the implementation of automatic stabilizers has the potential to solve all stimulus problems and will not require all the chess games that take place between the president, between the house, between the senate. It eliminates politics from the equation and it introduces economics into the equation. But first, let's listen to what Bradley had to say about the necessity of the American Rescue Plan to be much more targeted. Let's watch. Well, well, Sarah, you know, there, there's a lot to like, actually, about this uh, this recovery package. It helps turbocharge vaccinations. Uh, it helps. It's going to help get schools reopened. And so there's a lot to like about it. But we've said from the very beginning that it's important that any package be targeted and timely. Since this package was unveiled over a month ago, we've learned that American households have an extra trillion dollars in savings. We've learned that the majority of states have not suffered irreparable or significant revenue loss, which presents an opportunity to make sure that we revise this bill to target the aid where it's truly needed. So let's get this bill done, but let's get it done the right way by focusing precious taxpayer resources on the areas where it can make the most difference, not stick with the plan that was developed before we have the latest data. Now, the second segment of this video is very important. Neil says the plan, as it's currently drafted, sends money to states who are already collecting more revenue in 2020 relative to 2019. I will be releasing a video on our channel talking about the big myth about state revenue. Is your state broke? The truth is some states are actually doing better in 2020 relative to 2019 and in case you're wondering why i'll break down those reasons in another video that's one reason for you to subscribe to our channel please subscribe and enable notifications i think you're going to be quite shocked with some of the information that i'll be releasing that helps you better understand the country the economy and your money also speaking of your money bradley talked about the importance of automatic stabilizers for unemployment benefits and stimulus checks now what exactly is an automatic stabilizer? The way an automatic stabilizer works is that if there's a calamity in a given state, what that would mean is that the unemployment benefits in that state would go up. In other words, residents would make would get more money by way of unemployment benefits and potentially the benefits could last longer. This is the phenomenon of automatic stabilizers where as the economic need increases, the unemployment benefits or stimulus checks and other state measures actually kick in because a lot of states actually have the money to be able to help their residents because a lot of states have actually done quite well despite the grim financial picture, despite the financial disaster, despite the financial rout that was expected at the start of this pandemic. This is a very interesting segment from Bradley. Let's take a look at what the chief policy officer of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce had to say about the fact that states have more money than we think they have and about the need for automatic stabilizers as opposed to 
political shenanigans in future stimulus. Let's roll the tape and watch. We don't have to use all of it if it turns out too big, but what what's the risk, I guess, Neil? Well, what are you that's actually about? the problem, sir, is that the bill is currently drafted does use all of it whether it's needed or not. So uh, as currently drafted, it's gonna send money to some states who actually have had year over year revenue increases, even amidst the pandemic. And so um, this is the time where we can actually make some smart policy decisions to focus the resources. This is a false choice between doing nothing and doing everything that's currently on the, the piece of paper pending before the Senate. We can make smart policy decisions to target the money where it's needed. The, the 10 million plus unemployed need an extension of unemployment benefits. Um, should we automatically extend those through the end of August or the end of September, or should the extension be tied to the unemployment rates in the states, phasing them out as we get more Americans back to work? Those are kind of the, the, the targeted smart policy decisions that frankly are too often missing in the political debates in Washington but if we're serious about confronting the pandemic, if we're serious about being responsible with taxpayer dollars, are the decisions that need to be made. And the thing is, is, is Republicans and Democrats are saying that. So you're already hearing from a lot of Senate Democrats who are saying, hey, let's tweak this bill to make sure that we're focused on getting the resources where they're needed. That's exactly what we're saying at the U.S. Chamber. Those were very interesting comments. And guess what? Bradley isn't done. He said that policy is done in an incorrect way if we take a large number and then we backdoor policy into a number that is overshot. In other words, he said, hey, if you choose a big number and then you try and create policy around it, you're always going to make bad decisions. What he said was that we have a bad habit of backdooring policy, in other words, cre creating legislation around a number that is too high to begin with. He said that the right numbers, the right economics should be guiding future policy. Now, I have to tell you, the Biden administration would beg to differ because their thesis is, hey, we looked at what was needed and then we created the American Rescue Plan. Regardless, let's listen to what Bradley had to say about the size of the American Rescue Plan and whether it is an overblown, whether it is a plan that is large and unnecessary. Let's roll the tape and watch. Yeah, we, we've gotten into a bad habit here in that we've, we've decided on what the number should be and then we're backdooring the policy into the number. The right way to do this is to figure out what the real needs are and let that drive where the number is. The problem is when you start with the number and backdoor the policy, if you're overshooting on that number, that means those are resources that aren't available for the infrastructure bill that we all want to do next. Those are resources that are not available for the massive job training program that we're gonna need to help those who remain unemployed get the skills necessary to get back to work. And so um, we should start with getting the needs and the policies right, let that drive the number. And if it turns out the number is less, that means that we're gonna have additional resources later in the year for those other key priorities. It's very much what Larry Summers well, said, you know, several weeks ago. That's it, everyone. Behind the scenes of the criticism from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, an important organization that Democrats listen to, that Republicans listen to, and that business leaders all across the country listen to. We heard from Neil Bradley, the chief policy officer of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Let me know if you agree with Neil Bradley or not in the comment section below. Should the entire stimulus be more targeted? We know that many of our fellow Americans have lost their jobs permanently and need quick cash now. You need money to pay your bills. You need money to be able to put food on the table. So let me know whether you agree with the comments from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Thank you so much for watching. Please click like, please subscribe, please enable notifications. I would really appreciate that. That helps out the YouTube algorithm. I can tell you when Neil Bradley watches the Ignition Time channel, he clicks the like button as well. So it wouldn't hurt you to click the like button. A single, single action from you would mean a lot to me. You clicking the like button for me is like it's raining money for me. It makes me super happy. Folks, seriously, if you do that, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next episode of Ignition Time. Take care. Bye.